Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Madden and I'm an entrepreneur. Over the past decade, I've worked professionally in the field of musical theater. I'm also the co-creator of the only temp agency for dance teachers in Canada, Quick Ball Change. I've been inspired to start a mini-series vlog to share my knowledge as well as speak to those who work professionally in the industry. This is just meant to be an informal chat so we can hopefully all learn something and I hope you enjoy. Today we're talking about auditioning. I'm so excited because we're speaking with someone who's been on both sides of the panel. She's performed, choreographed, done many renditions of the musical Anne, and she's also a graduate of the Ryerson Theater Dance Program like me. So thank you so much and welcome Robin Calvert. Hi Sarah, thanks for having me. So Robin, I think auditioning is a skill. Do you agree and is there anything we can do to hone our skill? Auditioning is definitely a skill. Um, and the only way you get better at it is by doing it. So practice makes perfect. I think it's the only way to get past the nerves. Mm -hmm. And I think the nerve part of the audition process is the hardest skill to get past because you need to be able to relax your brain enough to soak up the choreography quickly and not panic. And I think when I'm teaching the biggest thing I talk about it is how to quell that panic. How many shows have you choreographed now? Probably 20. Wow. And uh, do you have a favorite show? Is it Anne? <laughs> um, I, Anne is obviously near and dear to my heart. It was, uh, I've been doing it for 15 years now, this season. Uh, but, I would have to say my very favorite show is Spring Awakening. Um, I love that that style, that contemporary style that you can create with the people that you have. Um, you know, very Stephen Hoggett esque. Who is my favorite choreographer ever? So, uh, when you're auditioning, do you already know what you're looking for stylistically or a look? Do you have an idea of that, or are you open for something completely different to blow your mind? I am usually open. Um, there are certain shows that are specific, like Anne, for instance, uh, because, of, because of the age ranges of the characters. So you need the adults to be a certain height, and then you have the kids or the students of Avonlea need to then be shorter to perceive them as younger. And then they also have kid kids in the show. So height plays a huge factor um, that being said, it can change from year to year, depending on who our adults are, uh, right. and also what the second show is, because, uh, in Charlottetown, it, it's, it's, it runs in reps. So there's a second show to think about. If I do Beauty and the Beast, it's more technical. If I do Anne, it's more athletic. Um, but I, I always love to be surprised. So I try to keep a very open mind. If I'm a five, seven dancer, do you think I should still go out to these auditions for Anne? Or if I'm not looking like a kid, do you think I should not represent myself at all? Oh, thousand percent. Go to every audition you can. One, they get to see you. Most choreographers in Canada do more than one show uh, mm -hmm. and work for more than one company. So if you blow their mind, you might not be right for that specific show. But they'll be like, you know what? They're going to be perfect for beauty that I'm doing at Drayton. You know what I mean? So I think it's super important to go to every single audition and even treat it like a class. You're going just to work on those skills. And that's another way we can practice and keep the calm the more auditions we go to as well. Absolutely. Another thing I would suggest going back to uh, practicing is go to New York if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, I suggest everybody does it um, because you can sometimes audition three times a day. And I think it takes that panic, not the panic, but the uh, worry that you're not going to get that one job just because there's not that many auditions in, in Canada. Um, so when you're in the States, you can go and maybe one audition's not so great and you're not going to worry, oh gosh, you know, Charlottetown's never going to see me again because I kind of blew that audition. Um, you can go and just be free and really just hone those skills. And I think I, I did that right away and I spent six weeks there and it was the best thing that I did. 
gives you a lot of opportunity to practice and also train. Think of it as free class and you take that pressure off of yourself. How uh, important do you think someone's audition outfit is? When I auditioned, I probably wore the same thing to every audition. Bright purple bodysuit, little black skirt, and I wore it to every audition. Super important. Uh, I just did a round of auditions uh, about a month ago, and I think we saw 200 non-equity girls. And when you go back two weeks later and think, oh, what was that girl? What did she look like? I'll often make a little notation, red bodysuit. And I'm like, it just gives people a memory and it, it makes you stand out from the crowd. And I think that's super important. If I'm auditioning for a specific show like Rocky Horror, can I, should I go as the character? Can I go too far with that? You absolutely can go too far. <laughs> um, my advice is always be the essence of the character, not the character. Give them the idea that you can be that person, but I, I suggest not going too far with it. <laughs> How important is someone's resume? Usually when we're doing our final dance call, our headshots are all lined up so you see where we are. Do you flip it over and make notes? What are you looking at? I think the resume is important once you get to that second round. Um, it can make you stand out. I kind of turn it over to see what the training was, um, what sort of shows they've done and which, which roles you've done. Um, have you mostly done ensemble? Are you, are you understudying characters? Because it also means that maybe I won't see you for the next round of dance call, but I'm, I look at your resume and think, well, they've already done a character, so we should call them in the same because maybe they fit somewhere else. So I love seeing things like that. But my favorite thing is special skills. It gives you, when someone comes in to sing, it gives you something to talk about and it makes someone relax and open up and talk about something that they are really confident in. And you also see these little tiny things uh, that maybe people could do that you could use in a show that you hadn't thought of. So I love those little special skills. That's my favorite section of a resume. And also it gives probably people an opportunity to show their personality. Yeah, I think personality is just as key as skills for me. Um, it's a long season, a lot of places, and you want to put together a really cohesive, supportive company. So if you get to see someone's personality, that to me is just as important as how great a dancer they are. What is your opinion on giving feedback? Now there's social media, there's Facebook, Instagram. I'm sure you're very easy uh, to reach and you have a lot of friends in this business. It, it can be a little bit dicey sometimes. What's your opinion on that? I personally don't love it when people reach out for feedback. Um, I would rather them go through their agent um, so that you keep business and personal separate. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just is easier. It's really hard to not take things personally. And if you have that layer in between, um, it really is helpful. And, you know, I have students who will sometimes reach out when they're just starting to audition. I don't mind that at all. You know, if you've just graduated Sheridan, it's your first audition, do you, you know, what could I do better? That's kind of the one line where I'm okay with that. Um, but I don't love mixing business and personal relationships. And that's also what our agents are for, right? Exactly. <laughs> How important to you is it that people go in and get it right, get your style, get the lyrics down right away? The rehearsal process is very quick, so we have to be able to pick up stuff quickly if in a two-week process. For you, how important is that? It's not important to me at all. Uh, I think that I see more personality when someone kind of messes up a step and they continue through and how they deal with that. Uh, I see more of what a person's going to be like in the room. Um, and you can tell if someone's an amazing dancer, they just might not pick it up in the 17 seconds they get to audition. And you can also tell there's a fine line. If they can't remember one, like three phrases strung together, then you know they're not going to be able to deal with a three-week rehearsal process.
callbacks. Do I wear the same exact outfit? Do I make all the same choices? Do I create new choices and show you variety? What's your opinion? Thousand percent wear the exact same thing, make the same choice. That's why they've called you back. Uh, then it's the opportunity for the director or the music director to step in and maybe give you a new direction and see how you deal with it. But you've been called back for a reason and they want to remember you as what you did the first time. What do you think the biggest mistake uh, people make in, audi in an audition room? Do not apologize. <laughs> a thousand percent. Uh, the biggest thing is we walk in and we apologize immediately. We rush over to the piano, get our music there, and we're like, you want to get through it. And I think take your five or ten minutes. Take your time. They want to see you. They have five minutes. Everybody has five minutes. Mm -hmm. Go in, take a deep breath. You want to do your best. They also want you to be the best person for the job. They want you to be the person they're looking for. Um, and just do your audition and no matter what happens, don't apologize. Just do it, say thank you and leave the room. No. That's a good one because we, we really do. We apologize all the time for everything, even when it's completely unnecessary. Also, I think it's important uh, when people go in, you can see in the room when people almost have the job already, they go in with a sense of calm and a sense of ease and you can tell the difference as well. Um, almost not being at a 10 out of 10 when you go in, maybe we've talked about this before, you know, on the opening night, be, be down at a seven out of 10 so you can maintain control. Absolutely. You don't want to go in and be vibrating at a crazy level. Um, and that's finding that calm, uh, taking deep breaths, really relaxing. And, uh, because especially when you hit an opening night that's when people get hurt and that's when things go wrong um so as as part of an audition as part of a performance level you really want to try and tone it down a little bit still have that amazing energy and hold it tighter mm -hmm. instead of being crazy and out there and when i see that in an audition that calm and that confidence i know that that is going to relate directly to how they perform in the show especially in a short time period. Anything else you can think of in terms of how people can get calm or training or things that you don't see in an audition room that you'd like to see more of? Any advice you can give to those who are auditioning? I think my biggest advice is to continue to work and hone your skills. No matter what, which stage you are at, there are always things you can learn. So, you know, I'm in a show, I got a contract for 10 months, still take class. Now is the perfect time because you have the money. Go continue to train at your voice. Um, and I think the best thing about getting older in this business and continuing through is the amount of skills that you can gain is way above and beyond what you thought you could ever do. And you like it will be better than what you thought was possible if you just continue to push and train you'll go from great to amazing to unbelievable to being on fire and you will not stop working so my biggest thing is never stop training there's always things to learn take your classes always go to class go to metro get to class get to class um, <laughs> do you think it's equally as important to train as a triple threat nowadays, as opposed to training with what we know already? Uh, triple threat is key. And actually, to be honest, most people need to be quadruple threat nowadays because of the small amount of work. Um, no matter what you think, if you're a dancer, continue to work your voice because a lot of times it comes down to who you can cover. There's, you know, that small ensemble now has to cover the lead. So, and the types of musicals that you do now, there's a lot of pop rock musicals, even Rock of Ages. It's still a music theater piece, but it's rock music. You have to sing rock music. You have to sing classic music. Uh, a lot of shows you have to be a musician now to get into, even though you still have to be an amazing dancer, singer, actor. So I think 
try and hone all of those skills. Robin, thank you so much. I wanted to interview you because I think you're incredible. I think you're doing a lot of amazing work right now and you're such a strong, powerful woman. So I think you're an inspiration to a lot of us. Um, so thank you for taking the time. I think we're going to inspire people to hone these skills, take class and get better so they can be working for you. Thanks, Sarah.